Welcome to our forum discussion on the roots of prejudice. All four participants in today's discussion are high school students from Africa. Let me introduce them to you now. First, from the Gold Coast is 18-year-old Alfred Bannerman. We call him Nini. It all started, Nini tells us. When he was born, he looked like a little old man. And Nini is a term of respect for an old man. We still call him Nini, and he considers it a term of respect. From Nigeria, Mohamedou Liman, 18 years old. From the Union of South Africa, Dix Lobger. Dix, well, you should see him do the rock and roll. From Ethiopia, 17-year-old Nabiat Tafari. It was Nabiat's suggestion that we start this discussion with a prayer in case there should be violence later. What you heard was Nabiat from Ethiopia giving a prayer in the Gies language. He's a cop by religion, Amhara by race, Hebrew in origin, and an African since he's been to America. How should we start this discussion on prejudice? Uh, would it be unfair to ask each of you what your own prejudices are? How about you, Navy? Actually, I'm prejudiced against the Italians, and I have been prejudiced against the Mohammedans. Since I arrived here, I, I have developed some new prejudices. And uh, I never felt that I was a Negro till I came to this country. Wh why? Because my tutor in the monastery told me that uh, I was not a Negro, but I was a sunburned Hebrew. Uh, you mentioned that um, you have prejudices against Mohammedans. I am a Mohammedan, and I have prejudices against Christians, too, in, in southern Nigeria. Look, you said you have prejudices against Christians in southern Nigeria. Is that particularly because they are Christians? I'm a Christian myself, but I have no prejudice against Mohammedans. I rather prejudice against whites. But why have you got prejudice against the whites in, uh, in the Gold Coast? Uh, I think it's a sort of this kind. Uh, at first, I was not prejudiced against whites anyway. I was prejudiced against fellow Africans because I had some opportunities which some of the Africans didn't get. I was brought up in a city. I lived the Western way. I dressed the Western style, and I did everything Western. And so. I was looking down upon fellow Africans who live in the villages in, in the rural areas. As I developed, I started getting some political ideas. Especially, I'm very much interested in the problem in South Africa. We hear quite often about how the blacks are treated there, how everything goes on there. And for instance, everybody knows that we get good friendship and peace in the world through games like the Olympic Games and those kinds of games. But everybody knows that the team from the Union of South Africa has not got a single African which means the people in South Africa think of themselves as superior beings. And this thing gives me more ideas just to be prejudiced and discriminate against the whites. And so I'd like you to explain to me some of the policies of the apartheid system mm -hmm. and the, the basic idea to the logical conclusion. Well, uh, in South Africa, one must realize this fact, overseas people especially, and that is that this is the first case in history that a, a white nation has settled itself in a black country in the whole of Africa, there are 190 million Africans, 190 million uh, Negroes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And in, South, in, in Southern Africa, there are almost 3 million white people. That means less than 3%. Mm -hmm. Now, in South Africa itself, the blacks outnumber the whites there by 4 to 1. In the States here, they outnumber the, the white people, outnumber the Negroes 8 to 1. For that reason, and for the reason, and for this fact, that one cannot nev ever draw uh, a parallel line between the Negroes in South Africa and the Negroes in the States. The Negroes in the States are far above the Negroes in South Africa as far as education and civilization goes. Now, the government's policy of apartheid, that policy, the guiding principle of this policy is to help the non-whites in South Africa to to self-realization in their own territories and within their own communities so that they can uh, govern themselves. Gradually, they'll be giving more and more power to govern themselves. Now, that, that's what the guiding principle is, and that's what the white man in South Africa is doing. Yeah, but uh, uh, is, is this, let me make this point clear. You say they want the Africans to develop themselves. And so will you allow the Africans to get their own governments and their own representations? Or will you like to give them the rules and the laws by yourselves? No, we just force them and do everything. We're not going to force them to do anything. No, the point is, I know that in South Africa you have a government. Mm -hmm. And there is not a single African in the government. There are 9 million Africans as against 2 million whites. 
Why is it that there is not a single African in the government of South Africa? Well, there are nine, there are nine representatives for the... But, I mean, how can nine Englishmen or nine Europeans represent nine million Africans? How can they know their problems and their ideas? These people are Africans. You believe in separateness. The Africans separate and the whites separate. Well, how then can it happen that uh, you get whites representing Africans I don't and think ideas that is, they are separate? I don't think that is fair either. Since the uh, people in the House of Representatives, do you call it that? That's yes, uh -huh, uh, they, they are supported by the taxes paid by the natives, aren't they? No, just a minute there. You've gone all together wrong. If the, see, if the South, if South Africa was to uh, subsist on the taxes that the Bantu in South Africa pay, then South Africa would drop just like that. Then oh, yeah. yes. Okay, on what do, they, do they support? What support them? What? The, the House of Representatives, or, or the people in the government, the officials. That's the two and a half million white people that are, that, that are supporting themselves and the, the overwhelming black population. 12 million black oh. people. It's then, it's those two and a half million to three million white people that are supporting the lot. Could I mean, you just explain how they are able to support themselves and how they are able to support You mean the white people? people support? Yeah. And how they are able to conduct this development without the assistance of the natives? Because they, they've got the Western idea of working and they've developed that country. Oh, I see. They've developed that country through the Africans working. I know that this, the fires in South Africa went down there because of wealth. It was through the gold rush and all those things that happened that, I mean, we, we got white men in South Africa. And so they went down there purposely to use the Africans as tools for their own benefit. Isn't that? When the white men went down there, uh -huh. they never even knew a black man existed down there. When the white man landed at the bottom of the Cape in 1652, the black people in South Africa had ne ha hadn't even moved over the northern boundary of the Union of South Africa. Yes. I know these people would like to get these sociological ideas just to get around the question. So far as I know, the people in South Africa are a nomadic tribe by career or by profession. They are headsmen who move with their cattle all around the belt N now in all places. Nowadays, even in the olden days. Okay. Okay. It might happen that they were living down south, but because of their profession, they happened to live up north. Because in those days, there were warring tribes which were waging wars against each other. And so you cannot say that the land is yours. Everybody knows that Africa is for Africans. And when we think of Africans, we think of blacks. That's how I know. Well, look here. Uh, just and to give you, you a are using short the policy, And you are using the policy of aggressors that the land, <coughs> the earth belongs to everybody. And the one that is powerful rules the part of the world which uh, you, you, is you, you, owned by the others. That's the policy that aggressors use. You know who, we, who are the aggressors? It's the African National Congress in Africa. They are the aggressors. No, if the, how can they be? If the Africans in, South, in Africa would stop being so militant, and would rather get down and help. Help and build up South Africa and build up Africa. The problem would cease almost immediately. Okay, let me ask you this thing. You said if they can come down and help, the problem will cease. Mm -hmm. The point is, how can they help if you get 9 million Africans and 3 million Europeans? And you get only 9 Europeans representing the interests of these Africans. Do you believe, let me ask you this personal question. Do you believe, according to your apartheid policy, in getting two South Africans? One South Africa for the Africans and one South Africa for the, this thing, with two different colonial policies and two different foreign policies? No. If you don't, give me the, give me the well, answer. Well, I wouldn't be able to give you the, the definite answer right now. Uh, why? Suppose. You believe in separateness. And why don't you believe in getting the Africans separate, having their own government and Look everything, the, the thereby creating two unions of South Africa? That's the point. But that, if, so far as you believe in apartheid, it means you believe in separateness. Then keep the African, Africans separate with their own governments, with their own money, with their own everything, uh, and keeps the fire separate. Excuse me, I'll just because come in there. Okay. Uh, he said that if Africans would just calm down and then cooperate with them, the land will, be, will achieve uh, peacefulness. Right. Do you mean that uh, the Africans are the people who are really the aggressors against you? You are not really aggress uh, aggressive towards Africans. I mean... Of course not. The general attitude in South Africa, and I come from a country, I know, every summer that we have, every holiday at least that, we, that I have, I go and spend on the farms, and I live amongst these natives. I, I really get to know what they look and what they then are. Then like. what do what, and what the general, atti the general attitude of the, the white, uh, white people in South Africa is sympathetic towards the, the black people. They regard themselves as the trustees of the I mean, black people. Why, why shouldn't they be I mean, sympathetic? The point is, I always stress this fact, that there are 9 million Africans and 3 million whites. Exactly. So the, I mean, if you come to South Africa, there are only 43 Africans with university I mean, degrees who are graduates. If you come to the Gold Coast, you have thousands of them. 
Gogo is a bad colony, just like South Africa. But we have been able to develop everything, which shows the capability of the African to do anything itself. Mm -hmm. But we have been able to get all these ideas through the mixture of Western ideas. Actually, we couldn't develop on our own, on, I mean, until we got British help. And since we got the help, we have been able to do everything ourselves. If you go down to South Africa and help the Africans with your ideas, getting, I mean, free mixture of ideas, everything will be okay. But the point is, you use the Africans as tools. You tell them that, don't be in this city after 9 o'clock, don't wear this thing, don't do this thing, don't go to America, and the Africans don't go any part apart, I mean, anywhere at all, outside the South African Union. You know, the, the white people in South Africa aren't allowed in the, in, the, in the black areas either, after dark. It's because you created this situation. Why don't you get free mixture? You look down on the Africans, that's the point. Am I quite clear? Because you said you believe in separateness, and I want you to come down to this um, point. You have not answered my question as yet. Just let me interfere. Uh, what's the fundamental cause of all this discrimination in South Africa? The one fundamental cause. Firstly, because the, the Bantu in South Africa is not as educated and, and as highly civilized. And therefore? Yes. And therefore they We've got to live with them together in that land, remember that? Mm -hmm. You mean you, you can't... people want us to give them equal franchise rights. We give them equal franchise rights mm -hmm. within hardly any time whatsoever. The, the white man in South Africa will have absolutely no say in, in anything. Uh, but you have been and there. You in, have this been case, in this case, you don't have any choice. Suppose, now you, are, you think that uh, if the society of the white and the society of the blacks is mixed, it will be quite dangerous for you because these people are not as civilized as the white. Exactly. Suppose these people are kept in separation and uh, you educate them. And uh, the government, I hope, I think, believes within the 20 years they will be uh, of the same standard as the white. Mm -hmm. And uh, this means that you are giving them help mechanically. And unless you mix with them, if they are as good as you, then they will say, get away, who cares for you? Yeah. You, you must realize the fact that they will do so because you are not exchanging ideas for developing these people in terms of friendship. But that's exactly what we're doing. No. no the the black man that and be? the white man in South Africa are working together. No. There's constant contact between the, the ministers and, and the Bantu. No, but I mean, oh, yes. how can nine white men get the interest of nine million Africans? That's the point. If you get the Africans there in the government themselves, it's not just they nine, can be it's, able. It's not just nine men, and it's not the nine million uh, black people aren't just sitting there and waiting for the government to do something the for them. They, they, they're governing themselves. They've yes. got, local, they got local governments already. Yes. And so they're getting okay. more and more local okay. government okay. Answer this question for me. I was asking you a personal question, if you don't mind. Okay. The point is, you believe in separateness. Yes, You I believe do. that if you keep the Africans separate, entirely separate, and the whites entirely separate, you can be able to live in South Africa? Again, you mustn't take this idea of separateness mm -hmm. or apartheid mm -hmm. too little. It doesn't mean that's fenced around and blacks live there and whites live there. That's how it is. Oh, no, if you go right. to South Africa, tell me this thing. You come near Johannesburg. Africans are not allowed to be in Johannesburg after 9 o'clock. Am I quite clear? Is it true? No, it's not. Is it, is it not true? In, in, in Johannesburg, after dark, yes. it's just those hooligans that walk around then. After dark, n uh, any self-respecting Bantu or white person mm -hmm. won't, be, uh, won't venture out of, out of doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Come to this point. I if you go to the railway Bantus stations... are not the same as you think of them. There may be the, the because minority. Because I've been in contact with them all the time. Since yeah. I've grown up, yeah. I know what they're like. But uh, I'm, I'm not how, far, how far does I'm the government make use of those who are educated, for example? They're going back to, the, to help educate and uplift their people. No, they are not going back. The, point is, the point is, you try to educate these Africans to go back and help their people. Exactly. And that is where I tell you that there are only 43 Africans with university degrees. How can these 43 Africans go back with their Western ways and Western everything to this African society and help the people? The people will not understand them because we, you are turning back to primitivism in South Africa. And so when these people go down to the Africans, the Africans don't, I mean, as it were, Look, yeah. I mean, get you're them always, nicely. You're always talking about you can't learn to swim unless you get into the water. Yeah. Well, you can't start educating them unless you send those that are educated no, back to the... you to start educating them, that, I mean, for the 300 years that, I mean, South Africa has existed. We have been in the Gorgos with Western contact for only 100 years. But if you come to the Gorgos now, we are able to do everything ourselves. We are, I mean, at present, I'm Look, sitting yeah. down equally with you. You can't, it's absolutely unrealistic and stupid. Yes. to uh, uh, compare South Africa mm -hmm. with the Gold Coast. Yes. There's absolutely no comparison. No, but basically, basically we are all Africans. Africans. Just let me finish. Oh, no. <laughs> in South Africa, mm -hmm. at least in the Gold Coast, there's never been enough white men there. Yeah. 
constitute a nation yeah. If the Gold Coasters at any time wanted to drive them out, and they drove them out, those white men have got England for their homeland. We the in only South thing Africa I know, have, the only thing I know is, according to the partition of Africa and the scramble for Africa in 1884, all the white men came to Africa and they settled at the places which suit them best, according to her. If you go to South Africa, the climate is Mediterranean in certain places, so you see white men there. If you go to East Africa, it is tropical, but because of the highlands, I mean, it's relatively cooler. And so you see white men there. That's why you get the mama in East Africa. In the Gold Coast, it is jungle. Mosquitoes and everything. And so the white men don't like to live in the Gold Coast. That's natural. And right? Nini, and excuse me, Navy, and Dix, I want to ask you this. Dix just said that there weren't enough white men in the Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. Would your point of view be that believing in separateness, you kept yourself so separated from the white men in the Gold Coast that maybe your standard of living has... Uh, no, ma'am. We were just keeping, I mean, side by side with them. I tell you as best that if you come to the Gold Coast, through the contact with the whites, we have been able to develop. We can never develop on our own, that's the point. But we got Western ways and Western ideas and Western health. That's why we are, I mean, as equal to the whites uh, now. I suppose it's, uh, it's a different case with um, uh, countries in, in West Africa. You see, we in West Africa, the, we were brought under the British rule. But um, you can't compare that with uh, the Union of South Africa because the uh, white went there to live and not to bring these people to a higher standard of living and to educate them and uh, bring and allow them to realize the full significance of but civilization. The, the Africans, they are the citizens. If they are citizens, why deny them these rights? We're not denying them the rights. Let me no. ask uh, Mohamedou another question. You said at the beginning that you were Mohammedan, that Nini was Christian, that you had some prejudices against Christians. Yeah. Let me ask you a fairly frank question. Do you have any sense that Nini from the Gold Coast is less purely African than you are? Yeah, I often feel that. <laughs> Why? Uh, you see, we in, in Nigeria, and in our part of Nigeria, northern Nigeria, we often feel that um, Africa is for Muslims, not for Christians. It's meant for Muslims. And we, uh, we, our social life is entirely different from the Western ways. We are totally opposed to it because it sort of uh, tried to disassociate our uh, religious principles. We were talking a moment ago about discrimination between white and black. Suppose Nini comes to visit you in Nigeria. Would he be discriminated against in any way? Um, I suppose so, simply because uh, for, for one reason. You see, we eat in a bowl. We in, Nige uh, in my home, we, eat, we put a big bowl down, and you have about three or four people eating, putting their hands all at the same time into the bowl. There is and, a level uh, of competition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see, we, we don't allow Christians to interfere. We don't allow Christians to put their hands inside. You see, it's one of our religious uh, doctrines. We don't allow, uh, we don't, we, we're not supposed to eat with Christians in the same bowl unless we're obligated to. Mm. And so that's one of the things which we... On this uh, question of religion, I'd like to ask you one more thing. I've heard it said recently that Islam is gaining rapidly in Africa and Christian, Christian influence is declining. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say definitely it is not true, but uh, to some extent it is. You see, there are two sides to it. Uh, we have the Ahmadiyya movement in Nigeria. They come from Pakistan. And um, I think it originated about 1885. I don't know. They have I wonder if Nini would agree with you uh, that Christianity no, is on the way. I disagree with him. The point is... Muslim teaches purely African, I mean, principles. That's the case. They had the Mohammedan influence in Africa, around about West Africa, in about a thousand years ago. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, about some few centuries ago. But Christianity came down in Africa about 200 years ago. And through Christian influence, we are able to adopt Western ways of life and Western everything. And so more people like to adopt Christianity, whereby they try to become Western. Because most of the missionaries who come down there are Americans or Englishmen. And people like to follow the, the style because of singing and everything, because African likes music. You know? uh, so but you, 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 you wouldn't say a person joins a religion simply because he finds it very easy or because he finds that he can conform his social customs to it. No. You follow it because you understand that it is a true religion and your spiritual understandings agree with it. No, the, m what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is I'm not saying that Western ideas are best with the African. I believe in African getting everything African. But the point is we know and everybody knows that if you get some things African, they are sometimes bad. So I believe in getting Western ideas, you know. And through Christianity, we are able to teach the people decent ways of life and different everything. How For instance, Mohammedans will not eat with a Christian, which is bad. It doesn't bring peace to the world. But through Christianity, we are able to teach pure love and but, love for everything. But and so more Africans like to... Haven't you heard me? I said if you... Of Christianity, there are Orthodox Christians 
who don't allow to mix with Mohammedans. For example, I, I belong to a real uh, Orthodox Christian 